Welcome to Sabertooth Performance. We are seated in my A4 Quattro and we're about to head to the road and see how much timing is being pulled from the car. So what is timing retardation? <laughs> what a big word. But anyway, that is any car enthusiast's worst nightmare. Reason being is, is that it's taking performance from your car, but at the cost of saving your engine. All right, so if you want to find out a little bit more about what is timing retardation, a few things that might cause it, and a few ways you can improve it, I want you guys to stick here with me. Otherwise, if you are just here for the tutorial, I want you guys to skip a little bit ahead. I'll drop a time for you on the screen, and we will catch up right now. What is timing retardation? Such as any modern car, the engine is being controlled by an ECU. ECU stands for Engine Control Unit. So it is technically just a computer telling your engine what to do and when to do it. With the information it's obviously gathering. So whenever something in your engine is not right or not happening like it's supposed to happen, the ECU can actually pick it up. For an example, let's take a bad spark plug. If you're driving an inline 4, V6 or any kind of engine, as soon as the engine picks up that bad ignite, it will actually pull timing out. When it pulls timing out, it means your spark plug is igniting a little bit later and that will make your engine actually to have less compression. Because it's igniting later, your piston will actually be coming down, lessening the compression while it explodes or whatever you want to call it, when the fuel and air ignites. All right, so let's talk a little bit about a few things that can add to timing being pulled. So when we're talking about that, we want to keep in mind that most of these things are happening inside of the cylinder. It could be a bad spark plug, it could be a bad uh, coil that is ignited, that's giving the power to the spark plug to ignite. It could be that when you're accelerating, your intercooler is insufficient to cool the air enough, meaning that the faster you accelerate, the hotter your turbo becomes. The hotter it becomes, the more the air it sucks is, is going through the hot turbo, actually going through the intercooler into your engine being hot. So it could be because of an intercooler that doesn't cool the air down enough. And one of the most common things is that it can actually be fuel. So a lot of people think the fuel in the area is good quality. I've got some bad news for you. It's not as good as you think. A lot of people are actually using octane boosters or even ethanol to be able to fix their timing retardation. So when I'm talking about ethanol, I don't mean they are running a tank full of only ethanol. They do about a 20% mixture with pump gas. Okay, so it's 80% pump gas and 20% ethanol. But before you start playing with ethanol, do know that ethanol can actually damage your fuel lines and your injectors. So be very careful of not throwing in too much ethanol. And then also you must always have an ethanol meter installed in your car just to tell you what the ratio is because you never want to drive with too much ethanol because your ECU can only adapt so much as well. But in my case, I think my car's problem is the spark plugs. Well, the last time I removed my spark plugs, I noticed that the tips is super duper white. Uh, it could be because it's running too hot or too lean. I'm believing it's running too hot because I'm not having any alarm showing me that it's too lean. I currently have VCDS open. We have written down everything that we want to see on this run. So I'm going to go from the top quickly. We want our engine speed, which is not our actual kilometers per hour or miles per hour. It's the speed what the engine is rotating at. And then we want our coolant temperature. The reason why we want this is we don't need it for the run. Is I just want to show you guys that before we actually do our run, we're going to make sure our engine is the temperature is only up to where it should be. You never want to run your engine cold. And then we got all our timing angle retardation. And then we got all the way down here till our adjust, uh, our ignition timing adjustment, which means that that is an actual timing adjustment at this current moment. I just think that's really interesting to see how it's requesting more and more the more we accelerate and how it actually works. And then we're going to see how much is being pulled from that. All right, so if you guys do not know how to set up any data logs on VCDS or anything of that sort, I'll drop a card here at the 
top right corner, not sure which side it is. <laughs> and then you guys can go and check it out. Uh, but yeah, I just want to tell you guys a few basic safety things before you do this. Alright, so you want to go and put your engine always on the side next to you. You want to have it ready as soon as possible. You only want to click on start when you do your run. When you do your run, please find a safe place to do it. I'm, I'm supposed to tell you guys to not do it on the road. So don't do it on the road. Find yourself a place where no one is at and do your run. So when you are going to do your run, it is like more of a recommended to do it in the fourth gear. But if you're on safe roads and stuff, fourth gear might be a bit too much because you reach very high speeds over 200 kilometers per hour, depending on which car it is. So you can even do a run in third gear. There's nothing wrong with it. Uh, as you guys can imagine, if you're in fourth gear, that entire pull till the red line is going to give you your car more info because it takes longer. You understand? So, but if you're trying to do that in first gear, your car is going to do such a quick pull that the information you're going to get from it won't be that accurate. I wouldn't say it won't be that accurate. It just won't be that much data or time for your computer, your VCDS to collect all the information from it. All right. So what we're going to do now is we're going to say log. It's going to ask us for a name. We're just going to say browse. We're going to say this PC and we're going to go desktop. We're going to say right over here. We're going to call it, what are we going to call it? Uh, retard run. So yeah, VCDS, we're going to say save. And once we click save, <clears throat> we can now click start whenever we want to run. So you can actually go and put coolant temperature off if you want to. I'm just going to leave it on because we are eight and less. So you never want to have more than eight things on your VCDS. It's just not that powerful to actually be able to run it. All right. So we're going to keep everything like it is. We're going to put our computer right here next to us. We can keep the cursor on start. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go to the road. We're going to accelerate one first gear, second gear, and then we're going to go third gear, keep the RPMs low, turn around, click start, put our foot flat to the ground, make sure it doesn't kick back. When it does kick back, obviously if you're in an automatic, if it does kick back, uh, back just shift immediately, and that's what I'm going to do to just get it back to third gear. You're going to run till the red line, and then you're going to slow down, you're going to turn around when it's safe to do so, and just click stop. So there we go. Let's see the car's temperature is now at 50, well, yeah, about 60 degrees. We can quickly go and just drive to our location. Currently, I'm about to pull in at the road where we want to go. I'm going to second gear, currently in third gear. I'm going to head over, click start, and I'm going to floor it down. I didn't back gear. There she goes. Push it all the way. So she shifts, so we are going to slow down right now. Okay, we're going to hit stop and there we go. So that is the complete run. That's all that we had to do. So we're going to quickly go head back home and we are going to go check out what the results is on how much timing was pulled. So we just reversed back in. I'm just going to move my seat backwards. So I've got some extra space over here for the laptop. All right, so everything is done. Let's quickly see at it. And there is our file. Everything is done. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to go on the internet. Sorry, I see the screen. Yeah, it's a little bit off. Uh, a little bit skewed. It's still skewed. <laughs> Sorry, this is going to trigger my OCD. All right, so now that we have our run and it's in a CSV file, we're going to go over and actually upload it on the internet. We're just going to put it for us in a proper graph. So now that our hotspot is on, we can access the internet with our laptop. So you're going to go on datazap.me. I'll drop it for you guys here on the screen, datazap.me, such as me. All right, so once you created your profile and stuff, right here at the right hand side, you're going to see upload log. You're going to click on it and you're going to say upload an English one. Okay, so there we go. Here it is over here. So what we can do is you can actually browse to go and find it. But because it's on my desktop, I can actually just go click on this one, drag it in here, maximize the size. There we go. It's actually very small, 2.22 kilobytes. Okay, so we're, we can actually go now and give this one like a proper 
detailing title and select a fueling used and all of these things. We can even drop a YouTube URL for this. So right over here in the bottom corner, you guys can see there's public. So technically what this is, is like whenever you're, for example, uh, when you're uploading this file, the public, such as you, yourself, you can actually come onto my profile and view the data log yourself. So I'm actually thinking about doing it. Give me a few seconds while I quickly just go and tweak a few of the stingies over here. Currently, I don't have a YouTube URL in because I'm going to upload this video over there. But we're going to leave it at public. If you guys want to probably find me on the internet, it will probably be under Sabertooth Performance. I see the name is not there now. So we're going to go to save. Oh my word, this is the moment of truth, guys. It's so loading up. <laughs> I'm actually kind of scared to, to see what it's uh, how it's going to be. All right, so here you guys can see actually from 2K when I put my foot flat. It looks like we boosted very late. Let's actually scroll down a little bit more. Okay, it doesn't show now. But yeah, this is the time duration when I click start. So at this time, I was still telling you guys that I'm still busy freeing. Uh, well, I was still gearing up and down and getting into the gear. So you guys, okay, now I'm going to go. Here you guys can see I floored it all the way. It shifted about 6,000. My gosh, my car shifts so early. I don't have a TCU tune or anything, so I can't push it till 7 to It shifts at 6 automatically. That's why you guys can see I shifted. Then I slowed down. And that's when I was turning over to press the stop button. All right, so what we're going to do is, here's the cooling temperature. As you guys can see, oh my word, so it actually cooled down through the acceleration. State 69, cooled down again to 68. That's not too bad though. Usually the temperature will actually increase, but that doesn't matter. So you guys are here for the uh, retardation, right? So here is the first retardation on cylinder number one. Wow, that's pretty good. We had zero timing, zero timing, zero timing up until, what is this? 4,700 RPMs, zero timing being pulled. Then we had three degrees timing being pulled. It was still minus. Show down to a rapid 6 degrees timing. For a lot of people, it might not sound a lot at first. Let me tell it to you like this. If I have to give you guys an idea on how much timing you don't want to see, you don't want to see more than 10 being pulled. 5 being average, but as in a person to know your car is like at almost optimal performance, you don't want to see minus 2, well more than minus 2 being pulled. So we got a minus 6 here, that's meaning it's being pulled a little bit too much, if it makes any sense. And then from there on when we shifted and slowed down, zero timing was pulled. Okay, so let's go to the next one, we can actually put this one off. Check number 2. Oh my, okay this is not too bad. This is really not too bad. So yours is just minus three. So meaning that our cylinder two, whatever is different, is freaking working for us. <laughs> We're gonna go over to cylinder number three. We got oh wow, this is this is pretty neat. I mean it's really not that bad. So right over here you can see when it shifted, it just went all the way to zero. Let's go to number four. And we got a minus three. Wow! This is actually freaking amazing. So there's obviously a few things that I can still do. I still want to change my spark plugs. I've got the R8 coils I want to put in. And then I want to see if it can actually improve this. This is amazing. So here we can see the ignition timing. So the obviously where we started to pull right over here. So this is actually how much it's set to like to give performance. So here we can see at max right before we shifted it was requesting 16.5 timing which is a lot but it's good obviously it's a lot so i seen most of the time about 20 20 degrees timing is the optimal one for your car but it, every car differs but here you guys can see this is when we shifted down and then we just slow, uh, slowed down as we went but anyway there we go we did everything to give you guys an idea this is how my timing graph look across from each other that is really not bad. I'm actually freaking impressed. Well, well done. Or is it the dashboard? Well done, <laughs> Quattro. So this is looking very good. Obviously, it's just here in the top end. You guys can see when your car really starts to boost and 
all the power kicks in and when you need to the car to run the most that is where it's pulling it the most unfortunately if you do look over here most of the things are running about equal especially the cylinder one is going the furthest down if i had to push this car to like if i could push it to 7000 rpms i mean it could have gone even further down we don't know maybe i've got to do a tcu tune before we do anything else so that we can have a look what the heck is happening but anyway guys, there we go. I really do hope that this video was helpful. I uh, really messed up my voice. I've been trying for, this is my second day actually trying to record this video. The first day I spent about four hours guys, four hours to record this video. I just couldn't, uh, but hopefully I'm, I'm glad if I gave you guys all the information, if it was nice and flowing. Do let me know in the comments below if you have got any questions, talk to me. I'll reply as soon as I can. Otherwise, thank you so much uh, for watching this video. I really, really do appreciate it. If you guys did enjoy it and you love to support the channel, especially if you're new, make sure to hit the logo at the bottom right corner. I think it's mirrored, so it's this side. And if you want to see any other video that's similar to this or just about my channel, make sure to hit the icons on the screen. And then I'll see all of you legends in my next video. Say it with me. Peace out.